I'm a lot of different things. I'm a mother. Um, I'm a sister. I have um, a couple artists that I manage. Um, they're, they're musicians. You know, I like music. I like to dance. I like horseback riding. I swim. But it's kind of hard to separate me from out from up and over because I live what we preach to these kids. So that that's a tough one. I just want to be the person that I'm trying to help these youth be and be the person that my kids believe I am. All right, so a little bit about what Up and Over is. It's a, it's a performance-based youth motivational group. That's what we started out doing. Um, just going into schools, middle schools and high schools in Oregon and Washington, um, sharing our stories of getting up and over our obstacles and then ending with performances. And then um, schools would ask us, you know, well, can you come back? What else you got? And the only thing I could say is nothing. We don't have nothing. Um, and so then we started formulating other ways where we could get back in there and still continue to service the youth that we affected with our presentation. And so now we do workshops. I'm very conscious of collaborating and partnering up with people who have like the same goals as we do. Um, we've partnered up with Horse Sense Riding School to offer equine-based workshops. We've partnered with um, a person from KBU to do audio storytelling workshops. We're out at Reynolds High School now doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, and then we do our, um, so we do our presentation, our workshops, and then our group mentoring and our one-on-one -on -one mentoring, um, all with the same focus. It doesn't matter what we do. Our end goal is the same, to really empower young people to know that they have the control over who they decide to be as people. Schools are really pushing students to be good students and be good employees. And we want to give them the tools to be good people that make good decisions about school, about career, about relationships. And I think that piece is missing. So that's, that's really what we're about. We just do it in a whole lot of different ways. I believe that where we are, everything that happened in our life, put us there. I think we all can attribute where we are to things that have happened. I mean, I can trace back even to being here right now, how I met you was probably through somebody because I was at some place because of something else. And I can trace that all the way back. Where we are now and where I'm at now, I can't speak for nobody else, but where I'm at now um, definitely comes from a mindset of wanting to help. My path to up and over started when um, I had a mother on drugs. The idea for up and over was um, originally to be a program for women in recovery because I had experienced having a parent um, hooked on drugs. And so when you're young and you see that, you want to hopefully at some point change that for yourself. But then I had kids, and so I wanted to change that for them. And then you get into a situation where it's like, I want to change that for as many people as I can. And so my experience with over overcoming obstacles, um, I think, put me on this path to, to, to know what's going to help other people because I've been through it. Not everything, but I've been through some things um, and just do what I can to make that possible. I know a lot of people won't understand this when I say it, and maybe they will, but it may not make a lot of sense to people. But when we go and we tell our stories and I talk about my mom and I talk about being um, in a household with an addict, there was a part that I would leave out that I include now. And that is that my mom was a good mom. And when I say that and you think of addict, you don't think of that being a good mom, making good decisions. But as I told my story over and over, I realized that I hadn't never asked my mom what her story was. I never even thought to ask her what it was that made her decide that drugs was the answer for her. I just assumed as a child that she was choosing drugs over us. And I remember being angry because she was choosing drugs over us and even asked her once, like, why are you choosing drugs over us? And her response to me was, I'm not. And that never made sense to me until I got older. And I understood that if I were to go into a room full of people and say, um, raise your hand if when you were younger, you wanted to be a drug addict when you grew up, 
I don't think anybody, I know nobody would raise their hand. That's not something that you choose to, to be. Um, and so it, it hurts me sometimes when I think about what my mom went through and, and what she may have experienced in her life that made her go down that path. Um, I remember our lights were off. Rent wasn't paid. She took the rack out of the oven, put it in the fireplace, wrapped some potatoes in uh, tin foil, put a skillet in there and cooked steak. And even though we didn't have lights and she had candles burning, that was probably the best meal I've ever had in my life because it was fun. She made it fun. And, and I knew that she was doing everything she could so that we didn't feel afraid and you know, scared and hungry. That's one thing I can say about my mom is she wasn't always an addict. She wasn't on drugs her whole life or my whole life. And when she wasn't, she worked hard. She was everybody's favorite aunt, um, favorite sister, favorite cousin. She was just a really good person. And the things that I know now, I learned from her. So I just want people to understand that we all have a story and to take the time and give credit to those stories. So I, I get uncomfortable when I say, you know, I'm the founder of Up and Over because that makes me seem like I'm doing something all by myself. And it takes all of us to do what we've been doing. But my involvement with it is I'm a founder um, about the 2011 you know, we decided to do do something in schools. And um, right now, because we have no funding, we have no staff, I pretty much do everything. The booking, the volunteers, getting schools, um, you know, contracts for workshops, trying to push what we're trying to do into schools, going to meetings. I pretty much do everything. <laughs> I've learned a lot about myself. Um, since starting up and over. I think all of us learn something. Um, so I have about 25 volunteers. We take about six with us to any event, any school, depending on what it is. And the more you tell your story, you know, for four years I'm telling my story, <clears throat> my personal story. I feel more comfortable in front of the team and you share more and more and more. You start to pay attention to you who you were, what you've been through, and what you've overcome, and you feel a sense of pride. But you also learn, um, you learn about yourself. Like I've learned why I'm controlling, in a good way though. Um, you know, when you're 17, you have to raise your brother and your sister because your mom's in prison. You have to take control. And so I understand that that's why I'm the way I am with that. Um, being homeless, having a drug addict for a mom, you know, you're evicted a lot. Um, you woke up out of your sleep and the sheriff is in your face giving you 15 minutes to get out. And so you have to grab up all your stuff that you think you want to take with you and you have 15 minutes to do that. You come to my house, I don't have a lot of extra stuff in my house. My house looks like um, a hotel room. There's not a lot of pictures out. There's not you know, I don't have a bunch of shampoos and all that stuff in my bathroom. I have stuff out that I can grab and go. Now, I never realized that that's what I was doing until I started telling my story of being kicked out, being evicted. And, and it made me realize that, wow, if, if how I am as an adult and how I live my life is affected by how I grew up, then we got to be aware that that's how these kids home life is affecting their choices in school. It taught me about me, but it opened me up to the, the reality that other people and their experience have made them who they are. And I have to accept that. I can't discredit their experiences. And so that's made me a more patient person. I didn't used to be a patient person, especially with grown folks. Um, but it's made me a more patient person because I understand that you are the way you are because of how you've your experiences and I can't I have to give credit to those you know good or bad when did it become a priority for me um, I, I would say it became a priority for me when the opportunity came about where we could get into schools 
we were going to go share our stories and perform. And I saw that as, wow, we're going to have these kids, basically a captive audience. How can we take advantage of that? Um, and as I saw the results that we were getting by just simply sharing our stories, I knew that that's what I was supposed to be doing. Not just doing, but living. And when you practice what you preach for real, for real, um, it's, it's almost like you don't have a choice. Like, I, don't, I feel like I don't have a choice. This is not a choice for me. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I just, I don't have a choice. Um, it's a priority for me because I want to set an example for my children. I want to show them that helping other people is what you're supposed to do. Um, but just seeing, seeing the results, I guess. When you have a kid tell you, I thought about committing suicide until I joined your mentoring program. Now I feel comfortable being myself and I don't care what anybody says. That makes it a priority for me, you know, to, to save a, a child basically or to, to change their mind. And not just me by myself. I'm not the one out there by myself doing the mentoring and doing the speaking. It's us as a team. But as a collective, to really make a change in someone's life, how could it not be your priority, you know? The most enjoyable was the first presentation that we did. Um, and it was the most enjoyable because it was at that moment I knew that we were on the right track. I just knew that, okay, we're gonna go in, we're gonna share our stories, and then we're gonna end with performances. I didn't know at that time, four years ago, that we were gonna be doing workshops and having mentors at high school, you know, on a permanent basis. And um, I didn't know all of that at the time, but I wasn't really sure the impact that we would have. You know, a lot of people want to go into high schools and we're going to go perform and we're going to do a high school tour and I'm speaking to youth and that's all great. But when you actually see and kids come up to you and they say, this has changed my whole outlook. This has changed how I look at other people, how I look at myself. And you realize that this is what you're supposed to be doing. So the, the, the most memorable one time for me was our very first school. It was not really deliberate. We just... Oh, I'm telling my story. Now you tell your story and it's over. Well, afterwards, there were um, girls that came up to us and shared similar stories like we had shared. And so it was at that moment that I knew how powerful that was. Just to tell somebody, I've gone through this and just to open up and be honest. And so once we realized that, I mean, the whole drive home, we were pretty much just quiet. Couldn't explain it. I still can't tell you what it is about us as a group that can go in and have an impact on folks that other groups haven't been able to do. I don't know. I chalk it up to God, of course. But um, when I realized that, I, I just couldn't shake that feeling. And I knew that, that that's what I was supposed to be doing. So, What do we do to preserve the memories made um, but I've been really blessed to meet amazing people, people who are willing to put in their time and their talent. And so we have people that come with us sometimes and take um, photos and do videos, um, which is cool. Thanks to social media and uh, camera phones and all that, um, having photos and videos of what we do, that's not hard. But on the admin side, once we do a presentation or a workshop, I always contact the, whoever booked us and say, hey, can you give us some feedback or can I get a letter of support from you so I can have that as we move forward. I have to quantify our results with the kids, not just take pictures and, and the videos. And so we've started implementing ways to track behavior. Um, if what we're doing is really affecting them in, in school and in life, not just for the moment. Um, and so we're, we're able to track grades now, we're able to track attendance, we're able to track by communicating with teachers if their attitudes have changed, if they feel more connected to schools. Um, I always send out an email when we leave a school, no matter what we do, so I can get feedback um, 
and just preserve that, you know, letters of support and all of that stuff. So we're trying to to do some things to where people know we've been here and we're coming and we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you know, with us at schools and they break down telling their story because you just realize all the stuff that you've overcome. So I want you guys to clap for yourselves. Man, so some of the places that we've visited, we've been doing this for four years. And our first year, we hit 27 schools. And so in, in, in Portland, uh, Oregon, we've been all over Washington. So the furthest I think we've been is Sultan, Washington. We've been to Riddle, Oregon, Yakima, um, Seattle, Tacoma, um, Everett, um, we really just go wherever they'll have us. Um, in Oregon, we've been to Albany. Um, we've been to a couple reservations. Um, again, a lot of places I've never even heard of. And we don't, it, it doesn't matter where they are. We just go where they want us to come. Um, and that is our, our market is all of Oregon, all of Washington. And eventually we want to kind of venture out to California and the goal if you look on our Facebook page, the goal of that says that we want to do at least 20 schools in every state. <laughs> and that's that's the goal. So that's the mission. But yeah, we've been to places I've had to Google. If I could tell everybody what we do, I would want people to know that we're not motivated by money because we don't get any funding. We're not motivated by numbers because we don't have to answer to anybody to get funding. We're really driven by results as they relate to the kids. What I would want people to know about us is, again, I'm not that special to where I can get 25 people, 25 volunteers for four years to come and move with me in all these schools. I want people to know that this is real. We're not motivated by anything else but helping these kids. Um, when people say, you know, who's your target youth? Is it, you know, black youth or gay youth? No, it's youth. Whoever needs us, we're there. A lot of these programs, and they're great, um, and we've partnered with a lot of these after-school programs, but their, their, their vision and their mission is different than ours. Mm -hmm. And so I want people to know that Up and Over's mission is not to get kids to graduate high school. They got 10 programs doing that. Our mission is not to get them to go to college. They got 100 programs doing that. It's not to prepare them for work. We're trying to prepare them for life. Because when you're healthy emotionally and mentally, physically, spiritually, you make healthy decisions. And I think that's the piece that is missing in a lot of programs. So if there was one thing, it would be that just know that we're doing it from the heart, for real, for real. When we say we want to go help youth, that's what we mean. And that's what I would want people to really see from what we say and what we do.